Hello and welcome to the presentation on how to use groups and labels to manage Prisma in EndNote. It's also important to note that there are other tools available to create the Prisma flow diagram and you should use what works best for your circumstances. This is an example of the Prisma 2020 flow diagram for new systematic reviews. And it's important to note if you aren't familiar with this flow diagram that you can go to the Prisma statement website to select the correct diagram for your purposes. On the next slide here, we have a screenshot of what your Prisma flow will look like in EndNote on the left and how those numbers correspond to the flow chart on the right hand side. Let's get started. Let's begin by talking about group sets and groups in EndNote. If you look on the left hand side, all references, recently added, unfiled, trash, and a group that isn't there called imported references are default groups that come standard in EndNote. Underneath that, you'll see my groups, which allows you to create and organize groups according to your personal projects, and we call these group sets. Group sets allow you to organize your projects under a heading which individual groups sit under. This allows you to have all of your references in EndNote in one working library, but then enables you to separate your different projects into different groups. Something that you need to remember is that each group in EndNote except the trash group is a subset of the all references group. Meaning if you remove a reference from a group created under my groups, it will not remove that reference from the all references group. This also means that one reference can exist in multiple groups you have created under the my groups function. Moving a reference to trash, however, will remove it from all references and therefore all groups you've created which contain that reference. So let's create a group set. Right click on my groups and click create group set. Name the group set database searches. This will contain all the database groups you intend to search for your review. Now we need to create groups under database searches. Right click on your new group set, click create group and name the group after each database you've searched. Let's briefly discuss importing records from databases into EndNote and adding labels to them. More information on how to export from individual databases can be found on the JCU Library EndNote Guide. I'm using some files I've saved earlier from database searches. So what I'm going to do is open them and import them into EndNote. I've imported 350 references from CINAHL and you can see here these have opened up into my imported references group. So this is a group that appears every time you introduce new references into your EndNote library. It separates these references out in case you want to do work with them straight away. We want to label these references as coming from CINAHL. Click into the references pane and select control A. This will automatically select the 350 references I've just imported. From here, I come to library, change move copy fields, and I drop down this field to label. From here, I will type in the name of the database and it's going to change these references. And I'll do this for the other databases I have as well. You can see here along the top, I've got the label field showing. And if you don't have the label field in your top row, what you can do is just right click and you'll notice you'll have these different options for what to show. 
I've got label field ticked down the bottom here. So it shows me automatically that I've labeled these articles. If I wanted to remove a column, so for example, I wanted to remove rating, all I would need to do is untick rating up here and it removes that column for me. So from here, I can click and drag these 350 into this separate group that I've created. Let me show you again using another import. So you can see here that I have just imported 321 articles from MCare. Note that in a note, there are multiple ways to do things. You can also right click, select add references to, and then move the reference into the groups that you've created. And you'll see we've got 321 here. I'll finish by importing Medline. Again, we've got 190 imported references from Medline. Control A to select them all. Library, change, move, copy fields. Change the field to label. Type in Medline. Click and drag. And then finally, we have Scopus. So we have 500 articles that have imported from Scopus. Control A, library, change, move, copy fields. Scopus. You can right click add references to Scopus. You can see here now that my databases are now individually labeled. Labels may be the date you've searched. It could also be the name of the database or a keyword related to a topic. These labels allow you to use the search functionality in EndNote to quickly retrieve and sort records. Labels will help us sort our groups following the Prisma flowchart. It is important to keep track of the labels you use in a separate document in case you need to search for that specific label again and can't remember what you've used. The final step in this process is to create one final group to combine your searches together. This will form the starting number for your all records in the Prisma flowchart. EndNote has a special functionality to do this called Create From Groups. To do this, right click on the group set we've created called Database Searches, and we select the Create From Groups function. I'm going to name this group number one, Total Combined, which will allow this group to appear at the top of the list for database searches. Otherwise it would put them alphabetically and select each of the groups in our group set of database searches. It's important at this point also to separate them by or. So you'll notice here on the left-hand side that a group has been created called total combined. And what that means is that it's combined the numbers from each of the groups of below and merged them all into one group. You'll notice since these were the only references that we've imported into the library, that this number is the same as our all references number. Now it's time to start populating the Prisma flowchart. Create another group set and name it Prisma. Right click on my groups, click create group set and name it Prisma. Create separate groups for each of the steps of the Prisma flowchart and for each of your individual exclusion criteria. The labels and search functionality within EndNote assist with record keeping and sorting to keep track of your Prisma flow numbers. To start your Prisma flowchart, click on your total combined group under database searches and select all records by clicking Control A and move the records to the all records group in Prisma. Once you have moved all the items to all records, you will need to label them. So ensure the items are selected, go to the menu bar, library, change move copy fields, change the field to label and type in all records. You can see here in the All Records section under Prisma, my labels now list the individual databases, but you'll notice that all the records now have that additional label. 
of all records. Before we move on, I just wanted to mention that you may like to create another group set and call it working groups. Sometimes you will need to complete your work over a certain number of days or weeks. Working groups ensure that you can pick up where you left off and keeps your true Prisma clean until you're ready. Depending on your working style, you can put as many groups into the group set as you need. For example, you might like to have a separate group to keep track of your duplicate records, or you might want to keep track of any highly relevant articles that you come across in your searching as well. The next step in Prisma is to remove records before the title and abstract screening process. So usually this involves removing duplicate articles which have been imported into EndNote from multiple databases. Deduplicating articles using EndNote is a relatively manual process and requires a lot of attention to detail. For example, as I mentioned just earlier, if you have a large list of records, you may like to deduplicate over time and use a working group to house your duplicates until you're ready to enter them into your Prisma flowchart. For more information on how to remove duplicates in EndNote, make sure you see the EndNote guide on JCU Library. I'm going to just move down my library and pretend uh, that a number of records here are duplicate records. I'm obviously not going to go through a proper deduplication or um, selection of articles for this example. I'm just going to move down these records and pop them into various groups. But just for note, in EndNote, if you want to select a group of records from one point to another, what you do is highlight the first record and go down to the last record that you want to pick up hit shift and then click and you'll notice here that it will select all of these articles. So if I was working over a period of time, I could pop these articles into my working duplicates folder. I could make a note, for example, that I stopped here at Collins and then I could come back and start deduplicating further. So again, to select from one point to another, Select the point, your starting point, hit shift, and then click to the end point. So say for example, this is my working group, and I have found 217 duplicates out of the records that I've imported from databases. What I can do here is control A to select all of these records. You can click and drag them into your records removed before screening group or as I showed you before you can right click add references to and come down to records removed before screening and so you'll notice that 217 articles have come in so now we are into this group here what you can do is go to library change move copy fields and then we need to change the label and we will call this one RRBS or records removed before screening. So you can see here that this label has been added. Now we're going to use the advanced search function which allows us to search through our EndNote library. To calculate the number of records for number three records screened, you need to subtract number two, records removed before screening, from number one, all records. So how do we do this in EndNote using labels? Click on the all records group. So this is the group that we're going to be working in and sorting. We've got the advanced search screen already available to us at the top. If you can't see yours, just toggle between simple search and advanced search. We need to change the field to label. So we'll do that for the first two rows. And we need to change this command to not. We'll begin with our label all records. So the label contains all records, not 
label containing RRBS. So essentially all records minus those containing RRBS, so all of those duplicates that we found. You'll notice we have 1300 odd articles here. Once I click search, that number changes. So it's 1150. We click and then control A to select all of these articles. Click and drag them over to records screen. And then from here, we need to label them. We go to library, change move copy fields, select label, and we'll just type in RS for records screened. At this point in your records screen group, you will need to start your first screen exclusion, otherwise known as your title and abstract screening. I'm just going to do what we did before and just pretend that we have screened all of these records here for title and abstract. And I'm just gonna quickly click and drag them over to records excluded. So what I need to do here again, obviously is label. So we'll go library, change, move, copy fields. And we're going to add the label REX. So you can see I've got the label added here. And much like we did with the above, in order for us to calculate the reports for retrieval, we need to subtract our records excluded from that record screened group. So in this case, come to records screened and we just need to clear our fields from before. We need to type in RS for records screened, not REX. So we want records screened minus labels containing REX and we've got 986 references. So again, control A, you can click and drag into reports for retrieval. Again, at this point, don't forget to label RFR reports for retrieval. Once you've populated your reports for retrieval group, you'll notice that the terminology from Prisma has changed from records to reports. And that's because at the reports for retrieval stage, you actually need to find the full text PDF articles that exist in number five, reports for retrieval. The articles you cannot locate the full text for will be moved to the reports not retrieved group and labeled RNR or reports not retrieved. The JCU EndNote guide has information on how to automate the find full text function within EndNote. This process is not guaranteed to find the full text for all the records in your selected group. And you will probably have to manually search for PDFs and attach them individually to any remaining articles. Using the find full text function, however, may save you some time. So I'm going to pretend that we were not able to locate the full text article of these articles, and I'm going to pop them here down to reports not retrieved. I'm going to label them and hit OK. So again, like we did above, we need to calculate our reports for eligibility. We come to our reports for retrieval group. We type RFR reports for retrieval minus the reports not retrieved. And we have our number of 965, which we click then control A and drag over to reports for eligibility. Once they are in this group, we need to label them RFE reports for eligibility and we begin sorting. So you will have a number of exclusion criteria depending on your question. So ensure that you create separate groups for each of these. In this example, we have three final exclusion criteria. I've finished sorting my articles according to exclusion criteria, so I need to remember to label them. So I'm going to type in reports excluded reason one. We'll do the same. Reports excluded reason two.
In order to calculate the studies included in our review, we need to subtract the reports excluded from our reports for eligibility. To do this, click on reports for eligibility and change the search fields to fit with your number of exclusion criteria. In the first field, we need to type in RFE or reports for eligibility minus our reports excluded reason one and minus reports excluded reason two and add another row and change it to not reports excluded reason three. Reports for eligibility minus reason one, reason two and reason three equal our final number, which is 10 references, which we can select and move to our studies included in review. Don't forget to label this group studies included in review. And there you have it, the final number of articles which you need to include in your systematic review. Going back to our slides example from before, you can see where the numbers from our Prisma flowchart in EndNote correlate with the Prisma flow diagram. If you have any questions about this process, please don't hesitate to contact JCU Library. Thank you.